Hi everyone. So Facebook recently just released a brand new state management library called Recoil. And I wanted to just run through a couple of examples on how to use it. And Recoil is so new that at the time of this recording, there are no TypeScript types for it. So today we'll be programming in JavaScript. And because it's a React package, we're going to need a React app first. So I'm just going to use Yarn to create a React app. And it'll just be called Recoil Examples. Before we get started, I'm going to clean up the source directory so there will be a lot less noise. So all I have now is an index.js where I removed everything that we got rid of and an app.jsx. Now all it does is say is app works. So now we're ready to install Recoil and luckily its name is just Recoil and nothing fancy. Okay, cool. And like everything else in React, it uses the context and the provider is going to be called the Recoil root which we can wrap our app with like this. And let's also make sure that we wrap this in parens so React still knows how to re render this. But the first example that we're going to create is everyone's favorite first example, which is going to be a counter. So we'll make another file called counter and then open that up, add the normal React boilerplate. And then inside of our app, we could import it in and then add it to our app. And after we save, it should just render on the page like that. Now inside of counter, we're going to create an atom. And what an atom is, is basically the thing that's going to hold our state. The atom takes in an object where we can give it a default value, and I'm going to go with zero. But we also need to give it a name. The name is going to be, uh, or the key, is going to be counter state for our counter state. And then recoil also gives us a hook to get that state. The hook is called use recoil state. So if we change this to open it up and have a return statement here, we can now use that hook providing the counter state atom that we just created. It acts the same way as a normal use state. So the first value is going to be the value of the state. And then we will also have a set value or a setter. And let's save this so it's a little prettier. Now I'm going to change the text in here to just display the value and we get zero on the page, which is correct. Now let's add some buttons. I have a plus and minus button now. So we're going to use both of them to set the value. So I've created two closures, an increment and a decrement function so that we add it to our buttons here. Both of them are going to be on click and then we'll pass in increment and decrement. And then if we go in to our app and press Plus will get the number to go up, and minus will make it go down. So currently our app looks disgusting, and it's going to bug me, so I'm going to add some styles. So back in our index.js, let's just import index.css, and then add some global styles. All right, this is dot slash. And in our index.css, let's add a example class that we can add to our counter. So let's just add it here class name of example and it's gonna have all right i'm gonna close this so we have some space but our example we're gonna just make it display flex and have everything centered just a normal margin and padding width and i'm making the font size a little bigger so that it appears better on screen and then just normal border and box sizing and a little bit of shadow just to make it pop and then for the button, it's pretty standard stuff. I'm just choosing this blue color because why not? So back to the stuff. All right, so the next example is going to be a little more complicated. I'm going to call the character count. And then after some setup, we can import that in and add it down here. And I'm just going to have a little h2 to label these examples. h2 is going to have text align of center. And all right, that's that's enough of that. So in our character count, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create a new atom called character state, and the key is gonna be the same name as the variable name that we gave it. This time, the default value is gonna be an empty string because we're gonna create an input here. So as you would expect, we're gonna use the use recoil state where we pass in the character state, and from the tuple, we'll use the value, and then use the set character using the onChange method. 
and then we want the value from the event dot targets dot value so nothing too crazy here and then with that you can just start typing in and expect it to work as normal but the new thing here that we want to start using is called a selector and what a selector is is that it returns a derived state so we can do some computation before getting that back and the selector takes in an object that we can treat pretty similar to how we treat the atom object so we're going to match the key to the variable name but instead of default the other attribute is get it takes a function where the first parameter is get where we can return whatever we want but the get accesses an atom that we already created so here we could pass in the character state that is defined up here and of course we need to set it to a variable so that we can use it but we could return the length of that string and get the character count and we could treat that selector as if it was an atom so we pass in char count state into re use recall state and grab the value because it's a selector we don't actually want the setter so we actually don't need the underscore i'm just not get that and then in a span i could do count is equal to char count and then we can test that out then we can start typing here so i'm going to type hello kelvin and that's an example of getting some derived state however we're using a hook here that we expect to have a setter recoil has a different hook that we can use called use recoil value which is the same hook except it only returns the first argument or the first value in the tuple of course it only returns one thing so we don't get a tuple back or an array we'll just uh get it like that and then similarly the recall also has a hook called use set recall state which is the same thing except you only get the setter and not the value now i'll make one more example this time we're gonna touch on asynchronous actions and to do that, we're going to fetch some pictures. So I'm going to make a dogs.jsx. And I put it on top so that you guys can see it. So in our dog component, I have a link to the API where we're getting the dog pictures. It's using the dog.ceo. So the first step is going to be a little different. Instead of importing Adam from Recoil, we actually want to get a selector. And if you think about it, it's because the state is derived from the response coming back from our API. It still needs a key, so we're gonna name it dog state. And this time the get function is gonna be an async function where we're gonna fetch from the dog picture API. And remember since we're using the fetch, we need to transcribe the body into a JSON format where we can finally send back the property on that object that we want. Now what comes back from this selector allows us to use React Suspense. So we're gonna use that. And the fallback, I'm just gonna have a very dumb loading thing. And then we're gonna have an intermediate component called dogs loaded, where we can actually use that hook, which follows the same steps that we've been using before. So we pass in dog state to use recall state. And for now, I'm just gonna do json.stringify dogs just to check that it works. So we'll save and see if and we need to import that so use recall state and there we go so suspense is working now we need to make this a little prettier so i know that dogs is an array so we'll map through it and each value is an image source so i'm going to provide an image here where we'll provide the source coming from the api and we should probably get the key so i'm going to do i here and with the index, we can set the alt and the key. All right, well, let's array message. Oh, I know what we did wrong. I'm using use recoil state here. When instead, we actually want to get use recoil value. There we go. Now we just need to make sure these are the right size. So uh, I think I'm just going to... So to fix that, I just set the image style width to 100%. And then the container of all the images to have flex. Actually, I could put that up here. So then I can get rid of this inner div and everything works fine. 